Oh, that noise. Anything to turn that off before it starts. Wow. So I'm going to talk to you this morning um, about endurance. Next week, by God's grace, we'll get back to the Words in Red series. But I wanted to talk about endurance this morning. It's a topic, um, well, you're just going to have to put up with. When I grew up, there was a song playing on the radio. Um, the, li- the only lyrics I ever remember from the song, and I haven't forgotten them to this day, I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain sometime. That's quite a biblical concept. It's true for saints, and it's true for sinners. The Apostle Peter said, May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Messiah Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. I don't like that verse. After you have suffered a while. You don't hear that on TV that much. You don't read that in books. You read books talking about being happy and healthy and how God will answer all your wishes and prayers and dreams like he's Santa Claus. And if not, there's something wrong with your faith. But the Bible presents a different story, that in this life we will have tribulation. Jesus said so. But he said, be of good cheer nevertheless, because he has overcome the world. God never promised us a life that would be free of suffering. He promised a life of faith would be a life of purpose with a certain glorious reward at the end. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he was a great theologian, William Barclay. People still read and quote his stuff. He said this, endurance is not just the ability to bear a hard thing, but to turn it into glory. God promised us that all things, even suffering, all things work together for good for those who love God, even suffering. So as faithful followers of Jesus, we have to learn to endure. And hopefully by the time we're done this morning, you'll have a different perspective, because I know studying this stuff out has given me a fresh perspective. Here's what James wrote. Brother Jesus, my friends, consider yourselves fortunate when all kinds of trials come your way. Say again, James. (laughs) Consider it, consider it fortunate when you suffer. No, I don't think I will, James. But wait a minute, this is James, the apostle inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's not some prosperity preacher I can just ignore. This is the word of God. And he said, Steve, consider yourself fortunate when you face your trials. Ah, James. For you know that when your faith succeeds in facing such trials, the result is the ability to endure. Yeah, that's what the lesson's about this morning. And make sure that your endurance carries you all the way without falling failing, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Suffering is good, Steve, because it leads to endurance. Endurance leads to a strong faith. I wish I'd have done this before I gave the message, but what are your tricks? What are your tips? How do you get through your hard times? Now, that's not a question you ask a five-year-old. It's a question you ask a 65-year-old. What are the things that you have done to get you where you are today? How do you deal with hard times? So when I think of suffering, and I wanted to think of a guy who made it through hard times, one of the guys that came to my mind is Winston Churchill. I don't know how well you know the history of World War II, but Great Britain wasn't feeling so great. They were being carpet bombed by the Nazis relentlessly. And the not everybody was sure Britain was going to fall. So while London is being devastated with these random terrorist acts, because they're bombing everybody, they had to take their children and send them away from the city. If they had relatives who lived out in the farmlands, they'd go to the relatives. But if they didn't, they'd send them off to strangers. They had to get all the kids out of the city. 
Could you imagine just packing up your kids and sending them off to strangers? You may never see them again. You may. You don't know. You hope they're okay, but wherever they are, they're better off than they are here. Other nations were certain Britain would fall. Prime Minister, how would you like that job during World War II? Was Winston Churchill. Had Neville Chamberlain, he wanted everybody to give in to the Nazis and make a peace deal with them. <laughs> yeah, that works. Well, Winston Churchill was the man for the hour. About a year later, after all this carpet bombing and their almost certain destruction, he gave a speech at a school. Here's part of his speech. Answering the question, how do you deal with trials and hard times? How do you endure? He said, appearances are often very deceptive. And as Kipling well says, we must meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same. You cannot tell from the appearances how things will go. This is the lesson. Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never in nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in, except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. We stood all alone a year ago, and to many countries it seemed that our account was closed. We were finished. But instead, our country stood in the gap. There was no flinching and no thought of giving in. We now find ourselves in a position where I say that we can be sure that we have only to persevere to conquer. These are not dark days. These are great days. The greatest days our country has ever lived. And we must all thank God that we have been allowed, each of us according to our stations, to play a part in making these days memorable in the history of our race. So, Mr. Churchill, what is your advice? Never give in. And he said it every time. I, never, never, never. That was his speech. Never give in. We don't like suffering. And we don't like having to endure in suffering. But suffering and endurance lead somewhere. There's something at the end for those who walk with God. Hebrews 10, therefore don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Endure while you're doing the will of God. It's going to be hard. And then after, you'll receive the promise. Work first, pay later. Suffer now, paradise forever. It's a good investment. A few years of discomfort for an eternity of awesomeness. It's like we're storing up treasures in the heavenly 401k so we can retire in the Caribbean forever. At least that's my take on heaven. Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And God calls us to endure. So when God became a human, he endured. And he didn't endure just a little. He endured as much as a human being could possibly endure. We'll never suffer as much as he suffered. So it's not like he's, you know, not practicing what he preached. My favorite all-time quote on endurance uses the word persistence, but in this case, they're the same to me. President Calvin Coolidge. Here's what he had to say. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. 
Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. I saw this cool meme on Facebook. It shows two guys with a pickaxe tunneling and a huge hoard of diamonds. And one guy's like that close, but it shows he's turned away, walked away, defeated. Because he, he had tried, he tried, he tried. There's nothing down here, and he quit. The other guy's just as close, but he hasn't quit yet. The guy who endures wins the prize. So back to what James said, another version. He said, my friends, be glad, even if you have a lot of trouble. King James, count it all joy. You know that you learn to endure by having your faith tested. But you must learn to endure everything so that you will be completely mature and not lacking anything. There's a fruit that comes from endurance, maturity and wholeness. So if I understand this right, and I think I do, we can't be complete, completely mature and completely whole without learning the lesson through endurance. You have to go through the trouble to get to the good at the end. There's no way around it. Boy, I wish there were. It's not just James who said, Paul said the same. He said, and I quote, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. I I'm sorry, James, Paul, I'm not there yet. I'm not that mature that I rejoice when I suffer. Maybe someday I will be. He said, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. Pro endurance produces character. And character produces hope. That's the route we have to take to get to our hope. We have to suffer to get to endurance, which improves our character, which gives us our hope. The hope is the end result, not just the anticipation, but the thing that's going to be realized. So, I asked you when I started, what are your tricks? What are your tips? You've lived a long life, especially those of you 65 and older. You got any tricks? And if you do, share them with me after church. I'd like to know them. Maybe I can start implementing them. Churchill said, don't give up. That's his trick. Never quit. The pickaxe was in his hand. He would have found the diamonds. Coolidge said, persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Basically, Coolidge said the same thing. Don't quit. Don't give up. And then these men, along with the apostles, said we have to change our attitude about suffering. Remember, Churchill said, don't even consider them dark days. Consider them great days. James said, count them all as joy. Paul said, rejoice in your sufferings. So I guess the two keys for endurance are never quitting, one, and two, changing our attitude and accepting joyfully the fact that endurance is a necessary step toward fulfillment as a human being. I guess it's kind of like the flabby guy who goes into the gym. The harder he works, the more toned he gets, the fit he gets. Maybe he's got an image of Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime in his locker to inspire him, because that's the goal. Right now, it just hurts. It's hard, it's sweaty, my muscles ache but there's something at the other end that's worth fighting for. There's another key to learning how to endure. Not just persistence, not just changing our attitude. This third one probably uh, should be number one in order of importance, but you're getting it last, kind of dessert after the meal. Comes also from Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author 
and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. How did he endure? Looking forward to that hope that the other passage of Scripture mentioned. The Arnold Schwarzenegger in the locker, knowing that the end is going to be worth it. Jesus didn't like his suffering. He didn't like being shamed, humiliated, and tortured, hated, spat upon, and then having the sins of the world dumped on his soul. He despised it. But he did it joyfully, willingly, because he knew what would have come from it, the salvations of countless souls. So let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Having a hard time getting through the endurance? Think about Jesus, what he went through. And that should give you inspiration so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten the word of encouragement that addresses you as sons, as children. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Please understand, underline that if you must, part of the suffering you will go through that which you need to learn to endure will be given to you at the hand of God. It's not always from the devil. God disciplines us. Do not make light of the Lord's discipline and don't lose heart when he rebukes you. I've prayed more than once about this verse. Lord, I'm losing heart. I know you tell me not to, but I'm losing heart. It's hard not to. Suffering has gone on too long. And I can't keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. I can't even pick up my eyes. I'm sure you've been there. And if you haven't, you will be. Not a fun place. So let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's consider him who endured. And let's not take the Lord's discipline lightly, knowing that he rebukes those that he loves. So this key for learning endurance is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Now, as I mentioned to you, his example was he looked forward. For the joy before him, he endured the cross. James said, those who endure end up whole and mature. Paul said, and I repeat, that our suffering leads to endurance, our endurance leads to character, and our character to our hope. Hebrews 10, 35 through 37, so don't throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to endure so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, James, Paul, Jesus, all have shown us that we need to take suffering as believers with a proper attitude. I pray you would mature us and teach us to have that attitude, that we might rejoice in our trials, knowing that they produce great character in us and this character hope. And I pray that you would help each one of us going through trials now to fix our eyes on Jesus, to think on what he went through for us, how that he was tortured and abused, rejected. Lord, he even felt rejected by you. He said, Father, why have you forsaken me? And then he died for us. And then finally, Lord, Help us to know if 
that's part of your plan when you're disciplining us and to learn the lessons you would have us learn so that none of our suffering is wasted and that we can get through it as quickly <laughs> as possible. Help us to be strong and joyful. And then help us to help those who are having difficult times, to be there, to lift them up, just to give them a shoulder to cry on because we know what they're going through because we've been through that too. Lord, help us to finish this race well. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.